somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, open down my eyes that I might see the wondrous glory of thy love. Teach us, oh God, to hear not only from heaven, but let it be very deep within our soul that we may be sanctioned for, for the things that you have called us to do. Hide you behind this sacred desk. And Father, within it, the cross that sets before us, each one of us, show us how to bear it. But in the course of our time, passing through, stop by just for a little while, that we may hear your voice. This we ask in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor real quick? This is not going to be short, swift, and sweet. Short, swift, and sweet. Amen. And look at your neighbor one more time. And you can be seen. The text, Amen, is so beautiful. It has good clarity and it tells us more sometimes than what we can actually read. But by past the English language, God is trying to tell you, uh, let's look at it from the naked eye, spiritually, and the simplicity of what he's trying to tell us all is that first of all, we're living not only in an age, but we're in a time where a falling away. It's not so much on space or what you see, but people are just dropping out, dropping out of sight, out of mind, out of circulation, and just out of the church. When we say drop out, we mean you can fall from grace. But because of grace, God gave us all another chance. Did I hear, did I hear somebody say amen? So we want to we want to just focus on not a direct source or message is not condemning, it's a wake-up call. And it invites us to look around and see what else is not only going on around us, but realize that without Jesus, none of us will make it. I want to use for a subject this morning, uh, you don't want to be a spiritual dropout. Look at somebody real quick say, neighbor. If you miss, miss me next Sunday, I didn't drop out. If you miss me next month, I didn't drop out. But when it's all said and done, come on, you don't want to be a spiritual drop out. Give the Lord some praise. My brothers and sisters, amen, down through time, there has always been a problem in not only God's church, but if you look close enough, there's been problems with dropouts since school uh, even started. And coming up through my era, uh, you could be smart as a tack and then still be lazy and drop out of school because either you were too bored because it's, uh, you were too smart for the teacher or the teacher was too dumb for the student. Whichever the case, dropouts have increased in school from down through the ages. And I say that easily because, amen, for at least 16 years, we taught high school there in Caroline County. And it's hard to keep young people in school. So dropout was a thing of back in the corner in the hallways and to look around, I'm tired of this. Of course, they would have other choice first. But uh, the, the, the bottom line was they just didn't want to come to school no more. It was too hard a work with a free education. But we've had programs to put in place since that time. And not only that, we, we're trying to not only keep young people off the street and back in school, we're trying to fix those who have been to school uh, to do something with the schooling. Amen? College people have spent the life savings and still paying their bills and can't find a job nowhere even right today. 
Now, I'm not talking about the education program. That's not what the message is about. I'm talking about you uh, understand what the word dropout is, but being a spiritual dropout is a hazard as well as a tragedy for the soul. Can I get a witness? Yes, yeah. right. yes, Today there's a great concern about even these boys and girls in, in, in the school, and some of them start college and never finish it. Yeah. I had a son that went to school five years of college. I don't see a degree yet. <laughs> I'm not throwing him under the bus. <laughs> My pocket is a little bit lighter. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And I kind of wish he'd finish it. And all he needs is about nine hours to at least get an associate's or a bachelor's or something. Well, that's another story all by itself. But being a PK, that's sometimes uh, the circumstances. When I thought he was studying, he was partying. That's not what the sermon is about. But did he drop out of college? No. As soon as I found out what them grades were, off to the army he went. Because if you're not going to spend that time wisely, Amen. at least spend it for your country. Can I get away? Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Maybe that's hard. No, it's not. But it's fair. <laughs> Let it be told that you don't want to drop out anything. Start something, you want to finish it. Right. Huh? Have I got a witness? Amen. I mean, you know, there are things in life that we start out with. We have big dreams, wide dreams. And there, there are money's being spent. And yes, we all love to see our children, our loved ones, our friends get an education, but it does no good if you want to sit home and still twiddle your thumbs and peel potatoes. You need to do something with the education. As it is with the education field and the dropout, the church, uh, amen, is having a dropout problem of its own. Can I get a witness? Someone said we lose 50% of our new members seven years after they have joined. Now that's just an estimate, but it's pretty close. And I don't know whether this is true or not, but, but we lose a lot of them. And, and why we lose them, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Some, some, some churches just have a tendency of splitting. Uh, some just drop off. Some just drop out. Some don't even drop in. But then again, the bottom line is you ought to know where you need to be when it comes to Jesus coming back again. Amen. And what I love about Sister Boomer at that time, she had no idea what the message was about all the time. She said, I pray that we will all be ready yes. when Jesus comes. Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Earlier, this place got lifted up. He thought he was doing something small. He did something big. All I want to do is walk around heaven. Huh? Can I get a witness? Amen. Well, you got to get there first. Amen. And you can't be a dropout. <laughs> if you, well, help, help me somebody amen. if you plan on going to heaven. Yeah. Can, can, can I get somebody to say amen? amen. Well, I, I, I'm finding out this. Why do people have God and, 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 and drop out of his service? How can you have God and just quit? Mm -hmm. How can you? Anybody say that they love the Lord and then decide one moment that they don't love him no more. Amen. How can anybody say that the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way and you're still standing, sitting, complacent in the same spot that you started 25 years ago. You ain't doing nothing in the church, out the church, on the church, for the church, or with the church. Y'all y'all was y'all made me preach this this morning. And this ain't no bus or train I'm throwing you under. Look at the world around you. And look at what people are doing. Look what folk are doing. They're dropping in for a spell to say I've been there. But they don't stay there long enough to get enough to keep them there. Y'all y'all don't want to hear this. I can't figure out why I got up this morning and decided that I wanted to go to church and when I got there, I didn't enjoy myself. How could you say you've been to church? Amen. If you didn't get into the service. Amen. Somebody ought to have an amen. amen. Anyhow. Because amen. God has been good. To all of us. Better than we've been to ourselves. Well preacher. I don't know where you're going with this. I kind of feel uh, offended. Well that's good. This is what it's designed for. Because all 
all of us need to get ready for Jesus when he comes back. But what, 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 do you do? What, what does it have to do with that I ought to get my stuff together? Uh, I drop in when I feel like it. Uh, and if I want to drop out, I'll just drop out. And most feel, people feel that it's none of anybody else's business. Wrong there. That. That's where the error comes in this chapter. James is talking. There's error in the whole lot. Why are we praying for folk who don't know tit from tat or have no desire to be the church? Listen. Being the church is different than just coming to the church. Are you there? It's hard being the church because it costs us something being the church. Well, I don't know, Pastor. I can't stay awake that long. But first of all, don't come here with a lecture or instituted mind where you're listening to a speech. If you've read the word at one time or another, it ought to relate back to you. And then if you don't wait until Sunday to come to church and have a service at least once a day, by the time you get to Sunday, your soul should be already caught on fire. But the preacher has said something about what you read about and what you talked to God about. Can I get a witness in here? There ought to be something about it. The reason you don't want to be a, a spiritual dropout is because, guess what? God dropped in to save your soul. Why would you drop out? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Why would you even think about dropping out? The very breath you breathing do not belong to you. It's grace and mercy. He could anytime. He could hit the delete button. I'll help me somebody. Too much is taken for granted. I'm not going to pick on the young folk here. I'm just going to say, listen, free education Free teaching, free laptops, free this, free that, free that. But even that dies if funds don't come from the federal government. But I know a man called Jesus who gave us freedom, liberty, there on the cross. And when he laid down his life, he freed us from sin that we may be washed again to be made new on that perfect day. One of these old days, I want to be sitting on the right hand side of the Father. And the only way I can get there, I cannot be a dropout. Help me somebody. Look at somebody real quick. I don't want to be a dropout. I want to be a dropout. I can't stand a dropout. No, don't, 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 don't say that. And that's why I saved your soul, so you can get the drop out. You can help pick them up. Bring them back into the fold. But what causes someone to become spiritual drop out? I'm not going to get too detailed on it. I just want to hit here and there. Well, contrary to the Bible belief, the Bible teaches that a man can drop out or even fall away from grace. Somebody read Galatians 5 and 4. And even as Galatians, speaks of this. Well, how can you understand that you're a dropout if you haven't found grace yet? You've heard of it, but you don't experience grace until you're saved. None of us do. We find out that we had it all the time and that it was grace that's keeping us day by day. But you ain't always known Jesus all your life. You took a lot of things for granted, just like I did. I got up, jumped around, slapped around, walked around, dazzled around, wrong places at the wrong time. And if Jesus had come then, my soul would have been lost. And I can't count on my finger how many times we can say that he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Let's look at Galatians here and see what happens. 
no expect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Woo. See, the law didn't die on the cross for you. That's right. Hallelujah. It was grace. Yeah. They gave us another chance. Yeah. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He even tells us yeah. that, that, that the latter, in the words that, or the first, even in those chapters, even as Hebrews makes it later plain in our lives, if you read your Bible, we find out when James gets to this point, he speaks of people being in error and then being converted from error uh, of his ways. Yeah. I mean, what, 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 what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying error, meaning sometimes we drift into circumstances where we're listening to the other man rather than Jesus. Yeah. We're listening to other folk rather than Jesus. Yeah. We're doing other things other than focusing on Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But we're looking for a truth and light in the wrong place Amen. at the wrong time. Can I get away with this? Amen. In the era of history, men have, have dropped out and he uh, even shows nothing personal, ladies. <laughs> Eve even shows us that she's the queen of what? Of, of dropouts. <laughs> huh? Right there in the garden. Somebody say dropout. Dropout. Israel showed us a total picture wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And there was the promised land just across the street. Yeah. Help me somebody. Yeah. You don't want to be a dropout looking at the condition of the world, focusing on the world, and then losing hope where hope had already found you and I. Yeah. You don't want to do this. Why? Because God already knows your future before you step into it. Amen. He knows what but he knows what you won't do and what you will do. But he's not gonna push nobody. All he's looking for is that free will. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I find out even after 40 years, Israel wandered Oh, Good God, we could have been across over in the promised land. There it was right there. But we just didn't listen. There is a promised land that I heard about, yeah. but I had to find out for myself. Yeah. Somebody said, I got a new pair of shoes. Yeah. I have a new robe. Uh, I just want to make it to the promised land. Hallelujah. I feel that, 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 that what he's prepared for me is going to be nothing like on this side of Jordan. But until I got in touch with the master, this was a myth rather than a belief. For many of us, it is still a myth because we haven't seen the promised land. Some of us don't believe that there is a promised land. Come on, put your hands together. You know I'm right about it. Is there really a king of kings? Yes, there is. Is there really a Lord of lords? Yes, there is. Is there really a Savior who died for your sins? Yes, there is. Is there somebody who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I am. And I know that God is able to do all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why are folks dropping out there? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, yeah preacher, you, you told me what Israel did. And how Eve led the, the dropout session. Many followed after that. But most folk who join a church, many of them join the building. Mm -hmm. Can I go there for a second? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're fascinated over the building mm -hmm. rather than the Spirit of God. Amen. That is in the place. They're excited about the crowd. But soon as the crowd leaves, they leave. Amen. So if the crowd dropped in, got the Holy Ghost. Just to drop out. Can you understand why we are the way we are when it comes to fellowship? If you dropped in just to see who was going to drop out first, that's bad news. Huh? Look at somebody real quick and say, He's almost through. You don't want to be a spiritual dropout. Well, get to the meat of what you're talking about. 
Folk just don't count the cost, huh? And normally they don't see the cost before conversion. They, they fail to take the cost into account. Deep. Turn to Luke 14. Counting the cost is not taking nothing away from you. It's adding to your life. It's changing your life. 14 on about 25 to 35, somewhere in that area. They consider denying themselves, but don't really deny themselves. Matthew even explains that. They fail to listen to God's message rather than the message. Uh oh, they went over your head. Because they hear the word, but they fail to become doers of the word. Can I get a witness? They fail to develop virtues of a Christian. And virtues of a Christian means when I hear something, don't ask the question, is God speaking to you? Listen for what the Spirit is already saying to you anyhow. Well, you could teach me anything. That's the problem right there. Too many folk are looking at the preacher and not themselves. There is no perfect preacher. Tell me somebody. They don't exist. These folk are trying to get to heaven just like you are. Only with more weight on their shoulders. Amen. Help me somebody. Amen. Let me hear these verses from that 14th chapter. Yeah, no, 25. Do 35, please. Counting the cost. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he Amen. cannot be my disciple. Amen. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Amen. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Lord have mercy. Working out your soul's salvation is finishing the job. Amen. Look at somebody real quick and say, hey, look, I don't mean no harm. Amen. But if you count the cost, Amen. come on, talk to your neighbor. If you count the cost, Amen. you won't drop out. Amen. If you count the cost, Amen. you won't drop out. Because the drop out is coming from failing to count the cost. Not only failing to count the cost, they don't listen to the message, they don't develop the virtues, they, 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 they associate with the wrong folk in the process, so that that's the wrong association, and that becomes a problem. And across the America, and across and throughout the universe, they fail to be led by God. And being led by God is being led by His Word. Many read of the Word, but many don't read the Word. Many don't even touch the Word until they see something morning. Uh-oh. And that's not good. So we continue for six days in ignorance and expect to pile it all in on Sunday morning. It's impossible. You can't do it. That's why you feel backlogged sometimes. Well, what is Pastor talking about? Well, he didn't. Uh, God, I read this one. Wonder why Pastor didn't bring it up. Why didn't you go ahead and read it before you got here? Amen. Uh, Amen. That makes a difference. Yes. Because you become part of the service as well as yes. the word. Listening for God's message, listening for God's word is counting not only the cost, but reading the word yourself Amen. day in and day out for clarity and asking the Holy Spirit to understand. Dropouts don't come when people uh, adhere to, to the word of God. A lot of dropouts, they, they, they fail because they, they desire to be rich and, and to hold on to their riches here on this side. Now, I'm the person. I'm still working. And according to my wife, I'll be working the rest of my life. But that's not an issue. I don't mind working. I enjoy it. To me, it keeps me healthy. It keeps me busy. It keeps my mind fresh. 
uh, and that keeps me strength wise. And for 70, 40 years old, I don't want to look good. I just want to feel good. Huh? Can I get a little bit? That's all I want. I just, I just want to feel good. And we ought to feel good about serving uh, our Savior. You don't worry about if it costs you something to get out of the bed in the morning, then stay at home. I know that sounds rude. It is. Because you're coming for the wrong reason. The church is not filled because you're satisfying somebody else. It's filled with the Spirit and the presence of God. Believers need the presence of God. Can I get a witness? There should be nothing boring about a Sunday morning service. Do not formalize the service based on what you think it ought to be, but wait for God to speak. And when he speaks, you can't help but hear his voice. Yes. And you're going to do something when he does speak. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Dropouts are far and few between, but it's climbing every day. That's 50% across America is getting wider. Church doors are closing, and we have been pretty close. But because of grace. Not, not just a few hands in the pot. Nine people showed up one Sunday. Somebody mentioned to me, Pastor, is it really worth you making this trip up here for nine people? I said, yeah. Whether it was nine or 9,000, the reason is Jesus. Look at somebody that said, you don't want to be a dropout? Well, we're passing through. But even in the process of that, we don't look down on other people or other churches. Let me tell you, it's all around. The spiritual drop out is spreading day by day. Why? Because of these seasons and these reasons that we're telling you. We're almost there. These circumstances and the, the failure, and we pick up dropouts because these folks, some of these folks are just not only the rich and they're stuck on money, they're just deceitful. That's bad. Most of the problem is sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? There are many models of Bible still coming out. There are are still countless denominations that are still growing. You will pick up a book and they tell you these, this is missing from your 66 books. Mm -hmm. You read a lot. The internet. Uh, to me, the new Bible for the world is Google. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a real Bible. But you want to know about something, find something. Google has it. And it's getting so to the point where we'll go to Google. <laughs> Before we go to the Bible. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Tell somebody that, that's dropout season there. <laughs> These folk lose their love. And I'm, I'm almost through now. Deceitfulness, arrogance, ignorance. All this. Well, Pastor, you're telling me all of this. How can I stay within the process of becoming a better child of God? What, 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 what do I need to nurture on? What do I need to focus on? Most cases and most comparisons. When a teacher sees a student that's sleeping in the class, <laughs> rather than follow the rest of the students, there's either a problem with rest in the home, or we've been out all night. Yeah, that's all. And before you know it, when the midterm comes, they have flunked the exam. Amen. And we can't figure out why at home why he's flunked the exam. He's going to school every day. At school, nothing is getting into the brain because he's sleeping in the class. Is the class boy? Oh, I'll come to well, my oh, mom is the teacher. Dad is the teacher. No, it isn't. They really don't want to be there. Right. Flip the corner. This is not school now. We're at Et cetera, et cetera, Baptist Church. Amen. We come into the place of worship. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. And in the place of worship, 
First of all, we didn't bring nothing in. But we expect to take something out. Second, we can't get focused because we haven't really accepted Jesus as our personal Savior. I accepted him because my friend did. I accepted him because I was down and out. I accepted him because uh, I didn't know where else to go. I, I, I accepted him because I was going to. I, there are 50 million reasons other than the right one why folk come to Jesus. But they don't really come to Jesus. They just go through the formality of letting somebody else believe that they have what? Found Jesus. And have not, and I'm coming close now. Amen. And the real problem is because by the time they sat down from the evening or 24 hours prior and get ready to try to get into the service, they're expecting the church to pacify them and justify the mood and the attitude that they have. When you come to church, you've got to have the right attitude. Tell me somebody. The right attitude means the attitude biblical, not way over your head, but at least know that Jesus is your today and your tomorrow. If we aren't anything else, nothing else matters because that's why you're here. When he went through what he did for you and I, all because all he wanted you to do is say, look, take up your cross. Count what I want you to do. Here, you can do it whatever way. But you got to count the cost if you're going to follow me. Don't measure the cost. He said, count it. Many of us try to measure it. Well, I, I would do this, but I can't. I would. <laughs> Jesus, I would help us. I would do more work at the church. But I didn't try that folk drive me crazy now. I wouldn't do this. I would. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Grandma used to say that. But if you're going to do something, do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. No other name. Well, salvation even takes its course. And when you do it in the name of Jesus, it gets jotted down in the book of life. Amen. Then when you get to the mercy seat, yeah, I remember that day, son. You came, you walked in, and you was really looking for a church. But you felt something when you walked in the door. So I wonder, well, I could have got up and went out. But I decided to stay and see what this guy Williams is talking about. <laughs> then I found out, well, really, am I a dropout? No, I just dropped in to see if I can get some of what everybody else is getting. Amen. What we have to do in this day and time, and don't you even blink your eye, mm -hmm. if you don't have your business straight mm -hmm. before it comes, yeah. it's too late Amen. after you get there. That's right. That's right. Stay away from them folks who are talking about, well, I've seen folks saved on the deathbed. Mm. Let Jesus do his work. Because mm -hmm. you ain't saving nobody. Neither am I. God is working through you and I. Finally, the reason you don't want to be a dropout, we worry about empty space within the pews. My God, if you seen, you seen these pews when we was cleaning a couple weeks ago, you wouldn't even want to sit on, on a pew. Period. We was in the cleaning business. Stuff all torn up, sideways, whiplash, and all, whatever you want to call it. And now that everything's back in shape, I say, man, this place does look kind of decent, don't it? it looks kind of like, but you should have seen it when we was what? Cleaning up. This is what God has to do with us. As we work out our soul salvation, as we strive to become better for what God wants us to do, We've got to get to the point where we don't drop out and drop in. We don't drop. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. We don't drop anything. But we grasp hold to, to Lord. I'm a weak, I'm a wretch, I'm done. But every now and then, I just need you to help me along my journey. Show me how to walk like you want me to walk. Help me to talk like you want me to talk. Help me to run like you want me to run. But above anything else, to be a spiritual dropout. 
I don't want to be there. I want to work while it's day. But when night comes, no man can work. Visit the sick. But when you visit, take some prayer with you. Don't leave her talking about them. There's error. And what you see was going on in the church. If you drop in just to find out what was wrong in the church, you need to drop out. Because you didn't bring nothing in. Help me somebody. A dropout don't have nothing to look forward to. Because they don't finish, as the Bible told them. They don't finish. So you can't be a dropout and expect to finish at the finishing line with Jesus. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. Well, you didn't take all that in the past. Yes, it did. Because you need to think about where you're failing and where you need to improve. And we'll start with one word. Commit, convict, and confess. Look at somebody say, neighbor. Amen. He's right about that. Right about I need conviction. I need, I need confession. I need confession. And, I need and I need commitment. Don't do me no favors. I didn't put the rabbit in there. See that? Yeah, I saw her job. It's not, don't think you're doing God a favor by showing up on Sunday morning. That's right. That's right. You should be here because you know that you belong here That's right. and giving something to his kingdom. Can I get a witness? Amen. One more time. Neighbor? Amen. I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. I don't want to be a dropout. I don't want to be a, I want to be a spiritual dropout. I want to, be a I want to work, work and work and work until Jesus comes. Get on your feet and give him 10 seconds of praise. You want to work until he comes? You've got to get on doing it right now. It's in the name of there may be one here. And you know, the safety side of what God is doing in our lives. We get sluggish. We get sluggish in our walk as well as our talk. And sometimes we just, you know, sometimes we just get flat out lazy. But believe me, the wake up call is already started. Piece by piece, day by day, we need to build a man. And be ready when Jesus comes. Get your business straight. Amen. And when you get it straight, you'll find out. There ain't no failure in God. Amen. God is trying to tell us something. He's showing us day by day. You wonder why this is happening. Stop wondering why this is happening. That is happening. This and that. All these other things. Just be faithful. And the Bible says, be thou faithful until death. And he said, I will give thee, meaning you, a crown of life. Amen. So you got to be faithful. You can't drop out. It's hard to drop out if you ain't really dropped in. Help me somebody. So give Jesus all you got. He can't use 99.66. He needs all of you. Because part of your soul, it can't separate and be one way or the other. Can't be hot or cold. The Bible makes it plain. God wants all of you. Stop justifying what and who you are and your way of life and focus on where Jesus wants you to be. Amen. You're just passing through. Grace gave you this time. Now God is coming back to pick up, claim what is his. And if you don't believe he's coming back, Ask Moses, Daniel, ask Elijah. I could go on. Scholars that have come before you. So what? It's thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago. He's still coming back. But the Bible tells us it's the second coming. No water, but fire. Don't get excited. There ain't going to be no jet plane either. It's going to be fire from heaven. Rain down. But be ready. Get your business straight. You don't want to be a spiritual dropout. There was one here today who decided to make not only Jesus their choice, out of fellowship with 
even I know around the church. Do not have a church home. Looking for a place of worship. So your talents may be used. It's not about joining the congregation. It's about staying intact. Staying in touch. You need that covenant every day. You don't know where Jesus comes. I don't. But you want to be caught up under the umbrella. So if you're here and you don't know him, you want to get to know him, then you come just as you are. Come knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you come, come.